When you hear the name Barrio Fiesta, what comes to mind? You might be thinking of the restaurant chain, or perhaps the brand of bagoong you enjoy with your kare-kare. If it sounds familiar, it's because the brand has been around since 1952. Barrio Fiesta started as a chain of restaurants that became famous for its kare-kare and crispy pata. It wasn't long before the business also started catering to overseas Filipinos and their love of Pinoy food. For Filipinos, few flavors remind them of home as much as the humble bagoong, or what the rest of the world knows as shrimp paste. It's a staple in the Pinoy household, and while there are many different versions, the most popular one is arguably the original bagoong from Barrio Fiesta. It's not a secret that Filipinos, no matter where we are, love to eat and that food is such a big part of our culture. In 2011, Dr. Rolando B. Hortaleza, a Filipino entrepreneur known for establishing a popular line of personal care brands in the country, acquired the Barrio Fiesta Manufacturing Corporation. This did not include the chain of restaurants. With his vision of bringing more Filipinos together through good food, Dr. Hortaleza bought the humble plant in Bulacan, where the famous alamang was sorted, cooked, and bottled. With the acquisition, several important changes were made, including updating the logo, which was meant to signify specialty cooking at home. Barrio Fiesta became a household name and brand that would expand to other food categories to cater to its growing market. A new line of bagoong products and other Pinoy pantry staples like fish sauce, peanut butter, and broth cubes were also introduced. These were distributed at scale, from local sari-sari stores to large supermarket chains and even to countries such as the United States, Canada, those in the Middle East, and Australia. Through the years, Barrio Fiesta has grown in leaps and bounds. It continues to break new ground, redefining the taste of home without forgetting what's really important. Bringing people together through their love of good food. Hello and welcome everyone, mommies and daddies. Hello to you all. Today we will be discussing a very exciting and timely topic, which is all about nutrition. And this is timely because July is actually Nutrition Month. And in celebration of this, Barrio Fiesta encourages parents to help their kids eat healthy and nutritious food. This afternoon, we've got games, giveaways, and two lovely guests to help us find ways for our picky kitties to become healthy kitties. Now, nutrition is an important topic that is near and dear to all of us parents. I know the main reason why most of you are tuned in right now is because we want to learn more about nutrition and how to feed our kids with healthy food without sacrificing on taste and flavor. We have a lot to learn today about these topics and surely after this we will all feel empowered as parents and ready to prepare our kids with the yummiest and healthiest dishes. And as I mentioned, we will be having some games and giveaways today, which is why I'm urging you to share this live stream to your friends and family right now to get the word out and to make the most of our giveaways. Okay, so for our first giveaway, and as a thank you to everyone who is watching here right now, 
Okay, everyone here will be getting a one month free subscription from Consulta MD. All you need to do is to download the app and use the code KMD Barrio. And that's it. Isn't that exciting? Also, I will be announcing the winners of the Healthy Kitty Plate photo contest at the end of the event. So watch out. Watch this until the end. Okay, so for our first guest speaker, our guest is a nutritionist and a co-founder of, Nutri of Nourish Philippines, a venture by a team of registered nutritionists and dietitians on a mission to nourish Filipinos through provision of nutrition services tailored fit to their needs. Please welcome everyone, Carmel Samonte. Hi, Carmel. How are Hello. you doing today? Good afternoon, Kelly, and good afternoon to our dear viewers today. Hello. Okay, Carmel, I think you have a presentation for us about nutrition, yes. so please go yes. ahead. May a quick overview <laughs> lang tayo today. So, again, <laughs> as you can see here, we're going to discuss a few things about nutrition things month about nutrition. and why it's important. So, why do we celebrate nutrition month? And that's because, and that's because isipin mo siya parang birthday mo. Di ba pag birthday mo, every year siya nangyayari. Every year na re remind ka sa age mo. Every year napapaisip ka where you are at, kumusta ka na ba as a person. The same way sa Nutrition Month, ganun din napapaisip ka dapat, kapag July at least, kumusta ka na, ano yung kinakain mo, nakakapag-exercise ka pa ba? Kumusta yung health conditions mo? Are you still healthy? Or na-address mo ba yung mga sakit mo? Ganyan. And the same way, it's Nutrition Month, important din siya for our children. And that's because, next slide please. Ayan ang team natin. It's called Malnutrition, Patuloy na Labanan. First 1,000 days, tutukan. And as you can see, it's very important for our kids. Kasi itong first 1,000 days, it just means yung time na pagkabuntis ni nanay until two years old, very important po for nutrition. And later on, we'll discuss why it really is important. Ayan, next slide. Next slide, please. So, as you can see, dito sa Pilipinas, may problems pa rin tayo regarding nutrition. So, one in four people, four Filipinos, ay either overweight sila or obese. Tapos, the same way, dun sa opposite spectrum natin, mayroon pa rin underweight. So, children, may tatlo sa sampung bata dito sa Pilipinas ang underweight o kulang sa timbang. Ayun. So, mayroon tayong overweight at underweight, which we call the double burden of malnutrition that we can see here in the Philippines. And then, in addition to that, may other types of malnutrition. So, mayroon tayong tinatawag na wasting o yung kulang sa timbang para sa height nila. Ayan, so isa sa sampo dito sa Pilipinas ang may wasting. And then, ang stunting naman, we have three sa so, 10 children here ang stunted o yung tinatawag na maliit para sa age nila. And all of these problems, overweight, underweight, wasting, stunting, it's all because of malnutrition. Ayan. Next slide, please. So how do we solve this malnutrition? Siyempre, tayo mga viewers, parang ang dami naman yata ang kailangang isipin para naman healthy tayo. Ganyan. But thankfully, we have this thing, it's called the Pinggang Pinoy. And ang Pinggang Pinoy, as you can see, di ba, sobrang simple lang niya. Ang sinasabi lang niya, kapag tinignan mo yung plato mo, dapat kalahat niya, merong uh, may fruits and may vegetables. And then the other half, yung one-fourth nun, kailangan may carbohydrate sources o yung tinatawag natin, go foods. So that would be rice, noodles, uh, bread, pasta, and then the other one fourth would be your protein sources or yung grow foods na tinatawag. So, so ayan, as you can see, there's fish, pwede yung other meat sources, tofu, legumes in the form of mongo or peanuts. Ayan, that's your protein sources. And then lastly, meron dyang baso because water is just as important as the food. So, syempre, we know eight glasses a day for all of us. And for kids, kunyari, mga five years old, mga five glasses a day plus an additional one glass of milk. Because this is very important dahil meron tong nutrients such as your protein and your calcium. Ayan. So later, if may questions pa kayo about nutrition, we can discuss them in our question and answer. Ayan. And that's the brief overview of nutrition. <laughs> Ayan. Thank you, Carmel, for all of those information. Actually, sobrang insightful 
for me, ah, like as a parent, hindi ko na realize na yun pala yung statistics right now. It's medyo, medyo troubling, nakakabahala ng konte. But that also means that we just need to raise more awareness about nutrition and Nutrition Month. So how important nga ba is Nutrition Month, Carmel? Siyempre, as an R&D, talagang pinahalagan ko ang Nutrition Month. It's not just, kasi there's this notion ng Nutrition Month para lang siya sa school, sa mga preschoolers na wearing costumes ng gulay, fruit, ganyan. But, diba, as cute as, as it is, parang there's more to that para at least doon pa lang sa age nilang napakabata, maging aware sila sa tamang uh, kinakain nila. And at the same time, ma-influence din yung parents, yung guardians na, oh, oh nga, no, nutrition month. Oh, kumusta naman yung kinakain ko ngayon? So, kumbaga, hindi lang siya for kids, hindi lang siya for adults. It's like to celebrate all Filipinos' nutritional status. You know, to check, parang our quick health check, kumbaga. Actually, we're very well put. And can we tackle a little bit yung theme natin this year, which is malnutrition patuloy na labanan, first 1,000 days tutukan. So, okay. syempre, sabi mo yung first 1,000 days from being pregnant pa lang, I did not realize how important that is. So, can you um, give us a little more insight about that? Yes, yun. So, yung first 1,000 days, as mentioned, dun pa lang sa pagkabuntis ni mommy. So, doon pa lang na-influence na yung nutritional status ng baby. So, dapat doon pa lang si mom and si baby, we make sure they're healthy. So, kasi diba yung first 1,000 days, masyado tayo, baka mag-focus tayo sa bata. But yung nutritional status ni mommy, just as important then And then, so ayun, yung sa nine months niya. And then next would be the first six, six months ni baby, which is purely breastfed dapat sila. And then after those six months, may complementary feeding. So, kumbaga, dapat yan na yung nag-introduce ka ng mashed na kalabasa, mashed carrots, diba? I'm sure naman all our viewers who are mothers or guardians would know yung mga na-experiment nilang yan. Ano ba yung kakainin ng anak nila? And then yun, after those complementary feeding, yun ay medyo nagiging picky eaters na. And then maybe, for, I think later we can discuss further ano yung mga parang tips and tricks dyan. But yeah, that's why it's very important kasi ano yung nutrition mo sa first 1,000 days, it would translate ano yung magiging nutrition status mo pag tanda mo. And ang important, ang maganda kasi dito, the good news here is kapag malnourished ka during the 1,000 days, kapag na-solve na mo agad within those 1,000 days, parang yung effect, hindi mo mapapansin yung effects ng malnutrition na nakuha niya in the future. So kung baga may parang... Um, Bawi. Nababawi mo. Kumbaga. Yes. Ayun. That's the good thing. It's a good reminder din for mommies, no? Kasi minsan yung mga mommies, lahat, okay, give all sa mga anak. Dapat sila yung mauna. But actually, if we're pregnant, kailangan din talagang alagaan yung mommies, yung health, yung, yung nourishment and nutrition. And actually, yeah. the whole family as well. Pati si daddy, huwag naman natin kalimutan. Na we have to also remind the whole family to eat healthily. Diba? Tama, tama. Okay. And we will get back to you. We will get back to you, Carmel, with all those questions, those burning questions about nutrition. Kasi marami talagang mga tanong, yung mga mommies dito. Paano nga ba pakainin yung anak ko? Ano ba yung pwedeng pakain? And all of that. We'll get to that in a little bit. But just a reminder for now, um, don't forget to stay until the end for more surprises. Kasi Barrio Fiesta will be giving five lucky winners their full line. Ito. Ito sa likod ko. Their full line of Barrio Fiesta products to be part of their kitchen. And each one of them will get a free annual subscription from Consulta MD. So isn't that amazing? I am very excited for all of you to have these. And uh, here's a tip on how the winners will be chosen. The winners will be the most engaging and participative viewers. So go ahead na yung mga, ano, yung mga nandyan, yung mga online Go ahead and participate and join the join join the discussion, ask questions, and share your stories for more chances of winning. Okay. So moving on, today we have a pediatrician from Consulta MD, the number one telehealth membership service that allows you to have 24-7 unlimited access to licensed doctors. Ayan po sila. Napakarami nila. And no appointment needed because it's all online. We have with us Dr. Maria Myrtle Ballesteros, MD, who is a DT 
DPPS in general pediatrics to enlighten us about child's health and give us ideas on how we can turn our picky kid kiddies into healthy kiddies. Ayan. Hello, Doc Myrtle. Hello, how are you doing hello, today? Ellie, and hello, Miss Holly, and hello, Miss Carmel. Happy. Hello, Doc. <laughs> so nice to see you. Okay, so Doc Myrtle and Carmel, we have some questions for you, for you both that we're hoping that you can answer. These are questions sent by our lovely parent viewers right now who are watching, subscribers and followers. Who um and th this is all about nutrition and getting our kids to eat well. So that's really, yun na talaga yung topic ngayon, especially now that we've been at home for more, I think it's going to be two years already since the whole pandemic has happened. Nakikita talaga natin each and everything that our child eats, di ba? So now there's really a concern. And uh, uh, something, uh, the parent really wants to fix it. He wants to fix the nutrition of the whole family. And ito, ito na yung mga questions natin from them. Okay, so for our first question, and I'm also wondering about this, is it normal for kids to be picky eaters? And at what age will they develop maturity in terms of eating? Normal nga ba talaga na ayoko yan, gusto ko itong ulam or what? Can you tell us, uh, maybe we can start with Doc Myrtle. Uh, thank you for that question, uh, Ms. Kelly. That's a frequently answered um, question sa mga magulang namin. That's lalo na sa telemedicine. So, picky eaters are a group of children that has uh, no issues in their oropharyngeal uh, apparatus or any psychosocial issues. So, ibang group of children. Ito yung mga children na uh, tama yung timbang nila, pero okay. for some reason, meron silang um, items, food items na um, pinipili ng nila kainin. And to be technical about it, it's around 30 items. If okay. you have a kid, so that's pretty high, right? So not all children are picky eaters. Maybe it's just a misconception of the caregivers. So you have to list. If the list goes less than 30, that is 30 items that she always eats or he always eats, um, she's considered a picky eater. But if it's above 30 items, um, maybe you should uh, be patient with your uh, child. Maybe she, it's just um, um, a miscommunication between the caregiver and the, the child. Now, um, among the normally developing children, um, they say as high as 50% will typically be picky eaters. Mm -hmm. Right, and among those fifty uh, percent of the picky eater, fifty percent will outgrow being picky. Okay, good. Right. Yeah, that's within two to three years, so you have to be patient with your child. And it's either um, they start being picky, for example, at two years old. So mm -hmm. maybe you should give some time for them to just um, have their own um, routine and taste. So that takes around two to three years. Or if they're five to six years old, that's when the maturity of uh, choosing their, their food that they like um, will, will just um, surface. No? And then 50% of those children who were picky at the start will remain picky as they grow. So, so their yeah, whole lives, they will be picky. Their whole lives, they will be picky. Oh, wow. <laughs> So that's it. Okay, that's that's I, very. I think, I, unless you have interventions, early interventions, mm -hmm. which, um, we will tackle in a while. The younger, the better, syempre. Of Dapat course, yes. the, ano palang, uh, toddler palang, nininip na natin yung habits na yan. Yeah, But that's, that's a good. That's, that's a good, good um uh, test, doka. Ah, yung thirty mm -hmm. items, yung ililista mo yung thirty items. That's a very good uh, test for parents, kasi most of us, syempre, parang porket sinabing ayoko ng okra picky eater na agad parang nililabel na natin sila right away dapat medyo dapat ano rin tayo yeah. give them a break yeah maybe yeah, you're not maybe favorite enough. lang talaga I agree maybe uh -oh. yeah. okay carmel do you have anything to say about ano any answer for this question yeah i do yeah, agree I na picky eaters very uh, ano yan parang subjective din kasi kami as nutritionists what we always say, dun pa lang sa pregnant si mommy, lagi na namin kukulitin na, okay, make sure ipakain mo lahat ng pwede niyang kainin. Kahit na ayaw niya, just introduce para alam niyang may iba-ibang taste talaga. And that helps para hindi maging 
picky eater in the future dahil alam niyang there are all these other tastes na pwede niyang So yung baby yeah, but, mato taste na niya while in the belly? Are you saying that? Uh, no, no, I'm saying like sa complementary feeding. But ah, okay. Um, uh -huh. yeah, yeah. Also fun fact na there are studies also that show na yung breast milk ni mommy sometimes meron diyan kung anong kinain niya. May certain tastes depending on what the mom eats. So parang doon pa lang. Kaya dapat si mommy din, very healthy din. She makes sure she's uh, my <laughs> Si mommy rin na. hindi picky eater. <laughs> Oo, oh, tama dapat. <laughs> Okay, so let's go on to the next question. When do kids start exploring in terms of their food? Like when are they open to try something new if it's not their usual favorite dishes? So based on your experiences, uh, Doc Myrtle, yeah, go ahead. I think you're on mute, Doc. Um, can uh, you repeat the question? Ah, okay, yeah. When do kids start exploring in terms right. of their food? Kailan sila mas nagiging adventurous? All right. So um the typically normal children develop their um ability to um ability to tolerate other than, other than milk, milk food at 6 at months, six four months, to 6 four months. months. No? And then they grow like um they have their the, the head control um is better 6 months onwards. So and then the, the the hands are also um, developing and their motor skills are also developing at par with the, their ability to explore. So and their ability to tolerate the food. So at we peg it at eight and to nine months that they really have the full capacity to like um, play with the food um, or um, um, test their senses, their five senses. So um, eight to nine months. Okay, so that's good to know and also comforting to parents na parang meron din pala talagang uh, chart na pina-follow usually yung yung uh, pag-explore ng bata or pag-try ng new things and not of course it's not so strict. Syempre, that's, that's not so strict. Um some some kids they have teeth already at 4 months. So mm -hmm. some some can go as early as 4 months that, that they introduce solids. Some can go as late as uh, six months. That's still okay. And mm -hmm. then um, they they are expected to eat the same food that um, the family is eating at around twelve to eighteen months. So oh. that's the time na wala nang specialty. Wala naman special treatment, pero hindi mo na siya ipe prepare na separate. But you mm -hmm. can use the the food that's prepared at home. Um, you just have to play with the texture and the taste first so because they have a different um, uh, time of developing the taste, the flavor, the texture. So it it's a slow progressive feeding at the start. It's good to know, Doc Merkel. Now, Carmel, do you have any uh, insight about this? Yeah, ang ganda po ang sinabi ni Doc about the motor skills. Kasi ganun din, lagi namin niya advice. Diba there's this quotation na don't play with your food ganyan. but at this yeah. age talaga go just let them play because exploring is not only for their taste or yun, as what Doc mentioned tama yung everything all senses kasama dapat talaga sa experience nila so bahala na if medyo nagkakalat kasi some parents medyo usi <laughs> diba ayaw nila yung maglo yung may nagkakalat na soup or what yeah. medyo ano lang chill lang muna dapat yung parents <laughs> Heads yeah, um, yung, yung feeding should be very, um, very a very good experience for the mm -hmm. child, so that she can look forward or he can look forward to that every meal time. Mm -hmm. So, di tayo magka problema so, sa play time. Oh, parang play time and eating time at the same time. But experiment. Um, ano ba dapat? So, of course, there's a thin line with that. You have to allow them, pero as a parent, you have to also provide like a, a boundary that at this time it's not a play time but it's an eating time but um, you should just um, give some space to explore the food that she has mm. you know? but um, there's some you have to, as, a, as parents you have to have limitations also on how mm. uh, I guess the wording not play time or par exploring the food exploring the food itself yeah, yeah. it's a better and <laughs> wording <laughs> yeah okay. okay so for the next question how about kids that eat only one type of food for example chicken and spaghetti and lang morning noon and night and every day 
what is this a normal thing and what should the parents do or try in order to expand the palate of the child? Uh, Carmel, maybe we can start with you. All right, sure. Um, kasi the concepts of nutrition, the best is dapat merong variety ang kinakain ng everyone. And obviously, pag ganito, nahirapan tayo. Kasi hindi niya makakuha lahat ng nutrients na kailangan niya. Mm -hmm. So, yung mga, lalo na kung walang gulay and fruits, paano yung vitamins and minerals from those, di ba? Ayan. Kaya kailangan natin talaga silang i-encourage na kumain. But it, I agree, ang daming stories na hindi ang hirap talaga lang pakainin. But always, just just be, ano, um, parang determined and tuli tuli mo lang talaga kasi um yung at least when you give them the option sa food nila um yun may may opportunity pa rin na kumain sila ng ibang pagkain kaysa like wag nating hayaang like magpa-give in dun sa request nila na yun lang lagi stand strong and don't give up parents <laughs> okay doc myrtle do you have any advice yeah, ang ganda nan Carmel. Don't give up and uh, but um you know what it's a real it's a real issue with the parents and the diet of the parent and the child. I mean um sometimes nananalo talaga yung bata, no? And because ang cute cute niya no? and then and we really love our children. Pero sometimes <laughs> um it's it's if if you um delay the introduction of new food, um the risk of having micronutrient deficiency um, and in the long run yung lifestyle choices niya um medyo pangit yung foundation no so we really have to um start early um there are some um strategies that we um, advise the parents in the clinic uh, number 1 um when you want to start a new food um you have to know that the child uh, is familiar with spaghetti and chicken only mm -hmm. and it's like the comfort zone that she, that he or she has no so, so sometimes, sometimes um it takes about 15 to 20 times of exposure before they consider touching the food just touching it oh, so wow. don't give up that's according to the study last 2017 mm -hmm. i think no um shared with us but by um the the pediatrician this this year no we have a convention so i imagine that so um they start with um number one just the child and the and the food being in the same room so that's exposure number one and then exposure mm -hmm. number two you just have to let the that child touch it not mm -hmm. eat it just um be around the food and um you know smell the food on the table not on his plate just on the table and then at some point um finger food it but not really eat it mm -hmm. um and then taste it and lick it spit it and swallow it if, if she if you want to swallow if you spit it it's okay and then um eventually she will eat the new food bite it chew it and swallow it independently without you um coercing the child or being very abrasive about it no mm -hmm. um and um don't um force your child to eat something yet um, um parang it's a negative experience for the child eh. so um it has no timeline um that's the new concept no um but you have to be aggressive about it um that you have to introduce variety so um some some parents um they um some some experts suggest that you you also give that the, the child um two healthy choices mm. so the the parent would choose the healthy choice for example um a, a mashed papaya and say a banana mm. so both of them are really healthy choices but you give your child the opportunity to decide for himself and then parang nanalo na siya noon pero nanalo ka din di ba <laughs> healthy naman talaga yung kainin niya the, so so that's like the the dynamics is um a bit like a social emotional uh, experience also for the child mm -hmm. so um it's it's some some people um some some child are very adventurous and good for the parent i mean but for some people some some have uh, children that uh, have a uh, limited taste 
Um, and ayun, so um, they also have like a food chaining that they, they say, for example, you expand the current taste. For example, if it's spaghetti, it has uh, sauce with it. So maybe you can try to uh, offer a food with sauce, but not with noodles. Say, with pizza, ganyan. Um, and then I can expand the texture, then expand the taste. Um, mm -hmm. it's a it's a course that you can enroll in if you want to but we don't have time for it pero they have the the, the thing is that the 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 eating experience should be pleasant to the child and also the parent should also interact with the child so mm -hmm. that they become encouraged so ganyan siya grabe pala yan patience is a virtue <laughs> yun pala talaga yung yes. tagla <laughs> and I love that you're introducing it slowly, na mm -hmm. without coercing. Because, of course, some of us, well, most of us, we grow up na kainin mo yan or else hindi ka alis ng table. Parang oh, parang dinadala yun ng bata hanggang pagtanda niya. So until matanda na siya, yun na talaga niya kumain ng okra or whatever it is na pinapakain. Mm -hmm. But I love that it's very, it's a very gentle way to introduce uh, food, Doc Myrtle. Uh, and gusto ko rin yan yung parang. Um, yung similar foods, yung parang pasta sauce, comparing it to pizza, yung parang hindi niya alam, nag-expand nag na pala yung palette. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's, those are very good uh, tips and tricks for us parents na ma-apply talaga. Okay. So here's the next question. Do I need to monitor the calorie intake of my kid? At what age can kids start going on a diet? Ito, medyo controversial or what? Kasi syempre, when it comes to kids, wala naman nagsasabi na, oh, kailangan ipa-diet or what. And here, I'm assuming the parent has a concern with the weight of the child. So may medyo underweight siguro or overweight. How do we assess it? Okay, who would want to take this? Carmel? Um, siguro, I'm, I'm sure Doc would add to this. Pero... <laughs> Yung question no, yung sa calories, how to, mm -hmm. you don't have to count. Talaga. Okay, um, yeah. Medyo toxic din naman yun for the mom. That by the yung weighing scale pa, ganun, uh, medyo uh, yeah. scary. Yeah. Unless parang may restrictive talaga na kailangan niya for like a condition niya, ganyan. Pero for a healthy kid, no need talaga. And that's where yung mga recommendations ng pinggang Pinoy, ganyan, dyan pumapasok. Kasi it just says there na, okay, one, Depende sa age mo, pwedeng one half cup ng rice, pwedeng three fourths cup rice, ganyan. So, ano siya, very simplified lang na you really don't have to count exactly. And okay lang kasi, in a, kunyari, today, mag one three ka calories for your kid. And then after that, mag one five calories. That's fine kasi in a week, parang nag average naman yan dun sa tamang requirement niya. So, no, you don't have to count talaga. Okay. Thank you for that, Carla. Hey, Doc, Myrtle? I agree with Carmen. No? Um, it's really very toxic then yung ano. Pero, um, yeah, we, we admittedly, marami na po talaga yung mga bata na uh, overweight and mm. obese, no? So, um, um, it's really a, a silent pandemic even before the COVID pandemic, no? And maybe it's because of the rise of the choices that we made, like um, yung food, is delivered na lang tapos yes. um mm -hmm. fast food pa di ba um and um very sobrang manufactured um instant yan yan mm -hmm. so um so, that's, that's the background pero if um you're mm -hmm. concerned with your child na medyo overweight na siya um that's a valid concern actually mm -hmm. and you have to do something about it you ask your friendly pediatrician about it you ask mm -hmm. even madali na lang mag telemedicine so you can book and then that's um we and the weight and height can be taken at home so, um mm -hmm. and then kung talagang na recognize natin na obese siya uh, may mga obesity preventive guidelines naman tayo so yung um, practical to sa mga mother is just um, remember the 5210. So what's 5? 5210. So 5 is 5 servings of fresh fruits and vegetables. Mm -hmm. you just have to, uh, we don't have to count the amount. You just have to count how you give it. 
the, mm-hmm. how much you give it and it will add up diba yung at caramel pinggang pinoy din diba half of it diba so mm-hmm. let's that's it and the number two is um screen time so you have to um limit the screen time to two hours a day that means in mm-hmm. television yung pad ipad and or yung mga tablets that's well, youtube just, ganyan YouTube, no let's compress it to two hours so mm-hmm. that you with the rest of his time playing physically yeah True. and then number one is one hour of uh, physical activity um and then at least one hour and then consume zero calories of sweetened uh beverages so water as the mm. only source of uh beverage and juice mga soft drinks oh, oh. coffee uh, yung mga coffee iced tea milk tea energy yeah. drinks uh, <laughs> mga um ano pa ba yung mga dutch milk chocolate milk yeah. chocolate. may mga flavor na matatamis so, na usually ang dami niyan sa ref tapos concern niyo yan yung uh, obesity uh mm makikiiwas po mga mommies no sa so, mga ganyan. water lang as the first uh, choice of their what about snacks doc does that ah, okay, play a part okay. yeah, um with a picky eater or with the weight gain with the weight gain ah Meron with the weight gain sobrang um, daming kinakain talaga masyado of course no we want our kid to be happy all the time pero sometimes uh food makes us happy diba kaya lang um sometimes you have to make some choices also no um and um it includes also yung routine niya so you have to set the routine na pag this at this time this is the only uh, time uh, ang ano strict tayo 15 to 30 minutes lang yung eating time actually and then the rest you have to do it with the um educational time ganyan not the ipad or not the television sometimes if you, if you can actually you can watch the television um with him or together together mm. so that um it could be physical also at the same time digital kasi pandemic Sobrang daming useful tips, Doc Merkel. Yeah. Thank you for that. Okay, so the next question we have here, uh, and I think all all parents can relate to this. Um, is it okay to use appetite stimulants for picky eaters? Ito, I remember trying this when I was in my tweens, and talagang nakakagutom talaga siya. But is it is it okay to do this, uh, Doc Merkel? Mm, ano mo, quick fix na naman tayo, no? We're guilty of that. Actually, you, you uh, can give all the um, appetite stimulants that you want. Can. Pero um, I don't have anything against appetite stimulants because um, they're there to help you um, with um, the the eating. But um, I I'm traditional, so more of parang yung approach natin to eating would really be uh, disciplined, timely, and then um, talagang with variety. Experience. Discipline, timely, and with variety. Very important. Okay. Uh, Carmel? Actually, agree din ako kay Doc. If I was asked sa mga stimulants, kami kasi we're nutritionists, so we can't prescribe like this medication. So, kay Doc na namin bibigay yung mga yan. So, kami, mm-hmm. ang encourage namin sa mga mommies would be ways para magutom si baby or si mm. child. So, mag-exercise siya. Baka kasi, kaya naman siya hindi kumakain kasi busog dahil hindi naman siya gumagalaw. Yeah. Uh, just let Nasa them exercise. Nasa tablet lang. Yeah, yun. Kaya ganun. Find ways to make them hungry without giving yung quick fix as Doc mentioned. Yun talaga. Or minsan, too much snacks, no? Yung in-between meal. Hindi na siya nakakakain ng meals niya kasi may, syempre, may mga chips or... <laughs> Whatever chocolates, nakakabusog. Yes, yes. Tama. Yeah. Okay, so next question we have. Uh, most toddlers tend to be on the thin or small side. Is this normal? Kasi I'm sure parents laging compare yung other kids. Bakit yung kid ko malikit compared dun sa iba? Or laging measure. What are the indicators that there are serious problems with the child's eating habits? So, para ma-appease yung mga magulang. <laughs> Um, Doc Myrtle. Uh, yeah, opo. Um, yung mga, uh, of course, Filipinos and Asians have really small belt. 
So, 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 so let's yung button natin, no? Yes, so, so, so let's not compare ourselves with the uh, and with the other count, Caucasian counterparts, no? Lalo na yung mga ano natin um Caucasian counterparts talagang medyo they're they're really bigger than us. So we have a different for sometimes they, they the, the WHO actually merged those those uh, standards that we have only one standard. So um kinakailangan nyo lang mag maging aware mommy sa height and weight ng bata and then punta kayo sa pediatrician or even sa pinakamalapit na doktor nyo, meron dun um, chart na pwedeng i-plot. Um, when you have your routine visits with your pediatrician, if you have the baby book, it, um, some some baby books have their charts there, so you can actually plot it yourself. Di ba? Meron tayong uh, Meron tayong meter sa bahay na yung stage meter yung, yung makeshift lang. Pwede nyo pong i-monitor yun. Um, and um, pagka med, nandun siya sa na-cross siya ng line. So yun po yung medyo tinatawag, yung yung, yung minensyon ni Carmel na stunting and wasting. No? Uh, we have to be concerned really about that. Pero um, pagka nandun naman siya sa normal na curve, um, baka hindi or we have to also consider yung height ng mga yung parental height yung height ng mommy and yung daddy so don't expect your child to be a basketball <laughs> player if you are say, say five or five five lang di ba oh, so may um din na may yung... genetics Mal malakas ang genetics <laughs> of course no <laughs> pero we have to um um we have to um parang may push yung uh, full potential ng growth ng children which is what we're doing right now so mm -hmm. yeah so uh, okay carmel go ahead yeah it's a question kasi it also included yung what are the indicators so uh -oh. syempre important yung weight and height pero um aside from that kasi you have to look yung lagi bang nagkakasakit yung bata mm. mahina ba siya lethargic or like ayaw niyang nakikipaglaro Yan, those are also good indicators to see na oh baka may problem siya like baka kulang nga sa nutrition or may other like may sakit baka may lagnat pa lang ngayon ganyan. So mm -hmm. yun, useful indicators din. So of course you have to monitor your own child and to see, 'di ba? Pero yung mga hindi na nag-grow, kunyari for a long time, how how often does a child have to grow? Like yung yung in between, kunyari checking from month, first month and second month. Dapat may growth ng konti, di ba? What if hindi na, hindi na nag-grow or, di ba? Uh, yes. Yan yung mga fears ng parents. Uh -oh. What, ano, uh, what, what is the usual, like, indicator na? Kanyari, within two months, he has to grow, like, a little bit, ganyan. Maybe Doc Myrtle can answer. Yeah, um, yes, um, so, uh, ano po, uh, we have... A normal curve na hmm. pwede natin i-plot yung yung uh, growth niya. Hmm. Um, so, as long as nandun siya sa normal curve, even hmm. if she doesn't grow that much that year, okay lang. Um, meron tayong tinatawag na um, growth spurt. So, yung growth spurt natin from newborn to six years old. And so, um, pag six years old to around 12, medyo bumabagal na yung growth niya. So, okay lang yun. Um, it's a physiologic growth spurt kasi. Tapos, doon na sa adolescent ulit. So, biglang tangkat. Yan, yan. So, ano siya? Um, it's comforting to know na may, may ganun tayo. No? Pero kung halimbawa, number one is talagang medyo nag-stop siya mag-grow. Baka may endocrinologic problem. Ganyan. Um, that's a medical problem. So you have to also see your pediatrician routinely. So yung routine checkup natin, importante po. Lalo na yung um, first 12 months uh, with the vaccination and then the, the growth monitoring. Kasi pagka talagang na-delay siya, or for example, hindi pa siya gumagapang or hindi pa siya nagsasalita or hindi pa siya, marami siyang hindi kayang gawin na um, some children her age or his age ay nagagawa na. So, it's a concern and we have to evaluate further in the clinic. Okay. Thank you for that, talk, for <laughs> clarifying. And now, let's go on to the next question. Um, I guess this is an observation by a parent. 
how come kids became more picky during this pandemic? Is it something our parents watching can relate to? And have the kids become more picky now that they've been home all the time? Totoo ba to? Naging mas picky yung mga kids? Uh, what do you think, uh, Doc Merkel? From your patients? Tingin ko, alam mo, ano, uh, Miss Kelly, tingin ko, mas nagkaroon ka lang ng more time sa kid mo. <laughs> <laughs> Kasi nakot napapansin mo na siya. Diba? So that's a good thing that na recognize early ng mga moms and dads yung problem sa eating kasi um, mm. some of us na nag-work din yung parents before basta kumakain okay lang yeah. tapos or nung paglaki na, na, when we're adults school. already ayan, nagsastruggle tayo kung paano maging healthy ngayon so um, <laughs> right now I don't know it's a, maybe it's a blessing also that parents mm. actually stay longer with their child and uh, they recognize yung mga patterns nila behavioral and dietary patterns nila and mm. um, siguro mas nare-recognize lang yung problem pero it's already there I think okay. that's it. Oo nga. Tama nga naman kasi parang observation niya ng ano eh ng parent at a recent time lang, itong time lang, hindi yung from before. How about you Carmel? Do you have anything to say about this? Yeah, it's possible nga na more time lang na parang more observed <laughs> siya talaga. But also naisip din na um I think it's important to highlight din na pati yung mga bata na sa stress din sila. So parang nasa sense nila na okay stress yung parents, yung guardian. Mm-hmm. Of course, there's a pandemic. So, baka yun yeah. din. Kaya siguro, baka may appetite changes. Kasi, mm-hmm. mentally, there's also some difficulty as well. So, yun. Try to help them de-stress also. Yun. Try to keep a cool environment sa bahay. Ayan. It might help as well. Actually, th- that makes a lot of sense. Because a lot of parents, hindi nila nare-realize yung mga anxiety nila. Napapass on nila sa mga anak nila. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. We also have to manage that as parents. Okay, now next, what is the proper approach in terms of communicating with the kid to encourage them to eat vegetables? Paano nga ba? One-on-one conversation ba to? But um, Doc Merkel, you kind of gave an insight about yeah. this and how to introduce it. If you have more uh, tips and tricks for us. Hmm. Siguro one addition lang, the message has to match the messenger, di ba? Hmm. So... You have to eat also vegetables so that we can eat. <laughs> diba? I mean, you know, um, sometimes because of the exposure um, thing na parang uh, you have to be patient. It's 15 to 20 times of um, exposing the child to a new food. Works. And um, let alone, hindi siya burger, hindi siya fries. Vegetable siya. So, syempre, no, medyo, medyo matalagang um, struggle din for the child. It it would um, be easier for the child to tolerate it if um, they have a mirror action. Kasi parang for a mother and child diet, um, they always mirror each other, di ba? So, may, may ganun sila na, na interaction. So, when the child sees that you pick something, the child will also pick it when a child tries to uh, when a mother when the mother eats something um the child will also imitate it and then so um it's it's that kind of um interaction that actually um glues the habit or the glues the the dietary um choices so no. kung, kung Ang palaya, ang hirap pa kainin. Actually, ako hindi pa kumakain ang palaya. Pero yung iba, talagang may mga batang mababait, kumakain sila. Or like, for example, carrots or um, sayote, for example. You eat the same thing. You don't uh, treat your child as special. Pero you know na it's a family culture na we, we, we are healthy in our family and this is what we eat. And um, I'm sure that the child will catch up kasi golden age yan eh. One, zero to five years old is actually the formative years of uh, social, emotional, and dietary skills of the child. So you mm-hmm. have to take that opportunity to introduce, introduce, introduce those things like yung mga high healthy choices and yung, even yung mga uh, physical activity, exercise, and um, healthy choices sa mga... Um, other things like sleeping early or having uh, a time with 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 the family or with yourself or um, if you're a Christian, yung yung Bible ganyan. So it's a, a, go, a golden opportunity for for everybody to just introduce the culture of the family. And okay. In other words, lead by example. Ni naman po ay papagalitan mo, and then you don't do it then, diba? <laughs> So yeah, that's that's a very good uh, tip actually because. 
the best way to to start with something to start eating healthy is with yourself diba so hopefully it will it will you know eventually pala hindi hopefully eventually it will uh reach your kids your husband and all your kids carmel do you have any anything to say about yes. this agree talaga you should set an example for the kids and also while showing them how to do it you also tell them why you're doing it so True. i remember kasi ako nung bata ako i remember yung first one of the first vegetables na kinain ko was squash and sabi ko, I like it because gaganda yung eyesight ko. Ganun. Uh-huh. Kasi diba yun naman lagi. Pag kumain ka labasa, gaganda yung paningin. Ganyan. Mm-hmm. So that was a reason for me na, parang alam mo yun, bata ka pa lang, alam mo na, may reason pala. So may, mm-hmm. kumbaga, may meaning na yung pagkain. Alam mo na yung healthy sa hindi healthy. Alam mo bakit at dapat mo siyang kainin. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So explain Good. and show them the ropes oh, talaga. May educational oh, oh. ano rin, counter, uh, oh, oh. counterpart na. Apart oh, oh. from eating, trying, tasting, there's also oh, oh. a reason behind it. Ang, ang ganda rin nun, oh, Carmel. Thank you. Okay, so next, um, I think Carmel touched up on this a while ago. What does a balanced meal for kids, what does it look like? And you did show yung, ano, yung uh, plato, you can get me noise. Pinggang Pinoy, pinggang Pinoy, mali pala. Uh, and uh, maybe you can uh, talk a little bit more about it, Carmel? Yeah, sure. Yung pinggang Pinoy kasi, actually, whether bata ka or matanda, yun lang yung basis kung ano yung plato mo. Ang difference lang niya is, for kunyari, three to five-year-olds, it's gonna be yung rice na one-fourth ng plate mo, that's equal to one-half cup of rice, you know. Versus kung matanda ka na one cup na yun of rice. You know? So, platito for kids. Oo, oh, kumbaga plato. parang nag-iiba lang yung size ng plato. Pero uh-huh. yung portioning niya, dapat ganun pa rin na mas marami yung gulay at fruits na kinakain ng bata. Uh-huh. And then, yung, meron pa yung dapat protein and carbs. Yan. Um, that's how you introduce a balanced meal. Na dapat hindi lang puro gulay, hindi yan dapat puro meat. Dapat lahat nandyan. For all meals. Doc Myrtle, anything to say about this? Yes, I, I agree. Um, inagamit din natin talaga yung pinggang Pinoy ngayon. That's the current recommendation. So, more of vegetables and fruits actually. No, So, that's what we're lacking right now. And um, I think that would actually also help solve yung mga uh, micronutrient deficiencies natin sa vitamins and sa iron also. No? So, yan. Agree. Okay. And lastly, what <laughs> tips can you give to moms and dads who have picky eater kids? What should parents with picky eater kids do and can you give us some tips? Ayan. Paano nga ba? Is it the flavor? Uh, well, actually, ang dami nyo nang binigay. <laughs> But maybe we can do a rundown, mm-hmm. maybe a reminder for uh, no, our parents watching. Uh, Doc Myrtle, let's start well, with you. Um, again, um, we have to be patient with our kids. 50% of the normal children will be picky, but they can outgrow it um, even without our intervention. But for those 50% who can't outgrow it by six years old, um, we have to be proactive about it. If you see your child na consuming less and less of uh, variety, that means um, four different kinds of food in a day, um, that means he's uh, is at risk of malnutrition or micronutrient deficiency. That's when we intervene um, at the household level. So um, yung sinasabi natin will be, number one, uh, family meal times um, can be an uh, uh, um, an opportunity opportunity for social modeling. So it, it mm. should be coming from the parents' habit themselves have developed. So um, and also it should be pleasant. The the meal time should be pleasant uh, with the child. And um, do not give up with your child. Um, a new food um, will be tolerated by the child as you grow the number of exposures up to 20 times they will consider touching it only no so ibig sabihin more than 20 times just uh, stay the, the banana or the apple or the whatever you want the the ampalaya or the carrot na nandyan lang siya natitigan niya and then as she become he becomes more familiar with the different kinds of fruit so mapaligiran mo siya ng iba-iba no so okay lang ang importante alam niya that 
he's safe touching it and then eventually um when he, he also uh, or she also sees you eating the same um mm. she will um, have the taste for that okay carmel do you have anything to add yeah so essentially yun talaga patience talaga for the mom the garden whoever it is cooking for the kid patience talaga na pakainin naman ang pakainin hindi baling hindi niya kakainin today hopefully tomorrow kakainin niya yan yun mm -hmm. and syempre alam mo naman yung lagi nilang tips lang be creative hindi naman mm -hmm. kailangan yung mismong pagkain yung maging creative pwedeng you just add a colorful plate dapat mm -hmm. magan kasi children eat with their eyes syempre ano bang ano nila sa taste hindi pa naman as developed as uh, like ours so more more of kung ano nakikita lang maganda anong mas parang nakakaakit so more mm -hmm. colorful alam mo yung nauso ngayon na parang sa bento box bento box designs yes. uh -oh. yung toothpick na parang animal yung itsura yan it might be helpful also kasi parang alam mo nakatusok lang doon great pero dahil ang cute ng nakatusok kakainin nila yung great yeah actually yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah that's so, that makes like, a lot of sense Yes. And and of course, um, by using Barrio Fiesta products like this, ingredients, lalong napapasarap yung mga pagkain ng bata. And actually, yan yung next na gusto ko yung pakita. Excited na ako. <laughs> yung video na ginawa ko with Tristan na I introduced uh, new food or different food using Barrio Fiesta ingredients na napakasarap naman talaga. And eto, I'll show it to you in a while. At wala pa tayo dun. <laughs> So, yeah. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Doc Myrtle and Carmel, for all the tips and tricks. Sobrang, sobrang insightful. Ang dami kong natutunan as a parent. And I'm sure maraming sa, sa lahat ng nanonood ngayon, lahat sila, they're all taking down notes. And if uh, you miss something, you can go ahead and replay it, rewind later on after this live stream. So, I, I, we all have a newfound appreciation now and understanding about nutrition. And that's all thanks to you too. Thank you so much, Doc Myrtle and Carmel. Okay, so reminding you all again as a thank you to all of you who are watching today's live stream. Everyone here will get a one-month free subscription from Consulta MD. All you have to do is to download the app and use the code KMD Barrio. So yeah, isn't that exciting? Also, I will be announcing the winners of the Healthy Kitty Plate Photo Contest at the end of the event. So watch until the end. Now, okay, ito na yung sinasabi ko kanina. I have a surprise for you guys. I actually tried three of the recipes found here on the Barrio Fiesta FB page. And I served it to my six-year-old son, Tristan. I caught it on camera with his honest reaction. So, you know, you know naman kids don't lie, diba? And it was so much fun. I can't wait to show this to all of you. So, watch this. Veggie burger first. first. Yeah, first. What? Because I want to taste it. <laughs> I like this. I like the veggies. It's healthy. Oh, yes, of course. And of course, all of these dishes were made with plenty of vegetables. This is really what any parent wants for their kids. We want them to eat healthy and we want them to eat plenty of vegetables. And yeah, I'm very excited to try these out. Beatrice? Yeah. <laughs> we have this yummy burger. It looks so delicious. Hold it. And you can try it out. <laughs> it's too big for his mouth. Yeah. Is it good? Yeah. It is a regular burger. It tastes like a yummy burger, right? Yeah. Mmm. Is it sweet? Yeah. So I think I'm gonna try it out as well. Let's see how how this fares. Oh my god, so good! Can you taste the veggies? Can you taste No. <laughs> Again. It's super good. And I love that when I look at the burger patty, I can see some veggies in there. It's hidden. There are some carrots, from what I can see. And I love how this is all blended into this yummy, juicy burger.
Okay, so we have with us Tristan who watched the video. Tinawag ko siya to watch the video again. Kasi hindi pa yun nakikita. Hi. Say hi. Hello, Tristan. <laughs> Tristan is six years old. And for our first dish, we tried the beef veggie burger using Barrio Fiesta's Crispy Joy breading mix. Ito. Ito yun. Ito, this is spicy. But get the one na regular lang. Meron siyang regular version. So what I love about the Barrio Fiesta Foods products is that they are the essential product line in every kitchen. They have suka, toyo, patis, ang dami talaga, kompleto sila, broth cubes, breading mix, which are all essential to making yummy Pinoy dishes. At syempre, the bagoong and peanut butter, ito, bagoong and peanut butter, where's the peanut butter? Here. Peanut butter. Uh, we have, um, ito talaga, pang, uh, pampalasa siya, or it's a great flavor enhancer for these vegetable meals for the kids. The recipes you can make with Barrio Fiesta products really go well with our Filipino cuisine. Siyempre, talagang Pilipino talaga pag Barrio Fiesta, di ba? And here's a tip I learned. As parents, we need to make the first impression. Sabi nga ni Doc Myrtle, we need to make the first impression an enjoyable experience when introducing various vegetables to our kids. And we can do that by using these flavor-enhancing Barrio Fiesta products. Okay, so um, any thoughts on this, Carmel and Doc Myrtle? Napanood niyo ba yung video namin? Yes, sobrang cute na to. Ang nakangiti lang ako buong time na nanonood. Lalo na nang sabi niyang parang hindi niya natikman daw yung veggies. Wow. Yeah! Magaling po ang nagluto. <laughs> na, very creative. And that's actually a good thing na para to increase the, the vegetable intake. Okay, so we have another video. Uh, this time, um, we, are, we tried crispy vegetable fritters. So let's watch this. Next dish that Tristan wants to try is this crispy vegetable fritters. So this is super easy to make. This is made of vegetables, an egg, and of course, uh, seasoned with Barrio Fiesta uh, condiments and ingredients. Super yummy. So, this is super nice and crispy. Give a bite. Mm. Are the veggies good? Yeah. And tasty, right? Yeah. It's so flavorful, right? Yeah. Mm. It's really delicious. I love how... I love how this is made entirely of vegetables and it's seasoned so well, it's so flavorful, of course it's made with egg, so it's super healthy and it's so easy to make. You just fry this and you already have your vegetable fritters. All the recipes should be on the Barrio Fiesta FB page. Happy? Yeah. Was it good, Chis? The vegetable fritters? Yeah. You liked it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so that was the crispy vegetable fritters that we cooked using Barrio Fiesta Crispy Joy again. This one, the breading mix. Sobrang useful talaga tong breading mix na to. And it just adds so much flavor without even having to try anymore. So, okay, I have a bit of trivia here for you. Did you know that Barrio Fiesta products contain the daily salt intake recommendations of FNRI, which is a maximum of 2 grams of salt daily. So an example of this is the Barrio Fiesta Bagoong, this one, the Barrio Fiesta Bagoong, which contains 380 milligrams of salt and below. So, sakto lang siya, hindi siya super salty. Uh, when, when we cook with it and it's healthy for the whole family. And these days talaga, ang hirap pakainin ng mga bata, let alone getting, the, getting them to eat vegetables. It is our duty as parents to uh, find recipes that our kids will enjoy and at the same time be healthy for their bodies. I super recommend these Barrio Fiesta recipes and they actually have many other recipes for kids besides these three. And yeah, you can go ahead and check them out in the Barrio Fiesta Foods official Facebook and Instagram page, but we have one more, which is the calabasa sauce pasta. Remember that? The pasta we, we ate? Yeah. <laughs> okay, let's watch this. Last one is this calabasa sauce pasta. Let's dig in. Yeah. Okay. Down the hatch. 
down the hatch. Yeah. Let's try it if you like it. Mm. Okay, let me try. Mmm, it's so creamy. Oh, it's all so good, right? Yeah. Yeah, so we added um, bits of chicken here. And of course, with the cheese and the calabasa sauce, it's so creamy, it's so smooth, and it's so delicious. What do you think of the food? Is it good or yes. is it not good? It's good. Do you think kids will like this? If their mommies will make this for them, do you think the kids will like it? Yes. Yes? Do you think they'll finish it? Um, I'm sure, yes. <laughs> Of course, not all kids would eat vegetables readily. This is really a great way to introduce vegetables to them and to sort of hide them in their food so they're eating nutritiously. And of course, these are all made with Barrio Fiesta products and ingredients over here. We have so many of them and I'm so happy that this is all approved by Tristan. Kid approved. Right, Tris? Yeah. Thumbs up? Okay, so Tristan took a break. Um, for the last dish, that was the calabasa sauce pasta. So I used Barrio Fiesta's chicken broth cubes. This, this is the chicken broth cubes. Meron din silang beef. And um, I used Barrio Fiesta soy sauce and Barrio Fiesta jumbo roasted peanuts, garlic flavor. So yeah, meron din silang mga peanuts like this. And it was actually very easy to make. And of course, Barrio Fiesta is now available in supermarkets and local groceries nationwide. Ito talaga yung pinaka tinatanong ng parents. Kasi is it available everywhere? Yes, it is in most supermarkets and local uh, groceries nationwide. And so, diba, spaghetti is the go-to favorite when it comes to the kids' meal. Parang example natin kanina, yung chicken and spaghetti. Yun yung favorite talaga. So, I thought that I would give it a healthy spin by using calabasa as the main ingredient of the sauce. So, of course, calabasa is so smooth and creamy. So, parang maganda rin yung ano niya. Maganda rin siyang gawing sauce. The trick is to add or incorporate the vegetables into your kids' favorite meals para kainin nila. So, yeah. What do you think of this? Uh, Carmel and Doc Myrtle. Yes. Approved ba? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And it's, so, okay. it's locally available, so um, the um, lot of mothers can do that also. Okay, so now let's see what our viewers are saying in the comment section. Actually, kanina pang uh, umakit yung, yung comment section. Ang daming questions, ang daming mga stories ng mga parents watching. And yeah, let's read. One from Ira Del Pilar Concepcion. Is it okay to give kids the same food every day? Okay, if you can answer that, uh, maybe Carmel. Yeah, I think we somehow tackled this a while ago. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so the gist is, no, kung kaya nating a variety talaga, dapat iba-iba. If kaya ang iba-ibang kulay, di ba? Iba-ibang kulay, iba-ibang Dapat hindi lang veggies din, hindi lang meat lang. So no, 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 it's not okay. It's the same food every day. Okay, Doc Myrtle? Yeah, um, uh, maybe kasi some, some parents are really having a struggle kung ano yung papakain. Pero if you have a meal plan for a week and then you just um, pick um, kung ano yung kain, may schedule po kayo. It's, uh, sometimes it's hard sa una, pero kung meron po kayo talagang like a meal cycle every week for four hmm. weeks, may mga certain ano kayo, hindi, hindi po siya ma, kung ba papaikutin nyo lang po yung mga meals ninyo na such that there is also variety. So, uh, it's a, you, you can start with a three-day meal plan muna. And then eventually mm -hmm. it will evolve into a week. And good luck to your mommy. Hopefully you you will make it into a month. <laughs> Pero kaya ng kaya niya. Dahil ano naman uh -oh. pandemic ay nandam. We really need to also have intro have to have an introduction po. Uh, ng pinakamaraming pagkain before five mm -hmm. years. Kasi pagdating niya ng six years, alam na niya kung ano yung gusto niya. So, parang ganun. so just expose expose that the child to the more um, variety the better po. So yun po. Mm -hmm. Actually nga meal planning is so important nga doc no. Parang it's also for our own sanity and for our budgeting. 
Yes. Para alam natin kung ano yung gagrocery, hindi tayo mag-overspend, wala mag-spoil sa, sa ref natin, yung mga hindi nakain. Very good talagang reminder yan, Doc. Okay, next question we have from Kimberly Rose S. Pahilan. Uh, tama po ba yung sinasabi ng iba na gutumin daw ang bata dahil pag nagutom yan, kakainin din daw kahit ayaw niya talaga kainin yung food na niluto? What do you think about that? Uh, maybe we can start with Carmel. Gutumin ng bata. What do you think? Parang ano, um, maybe what we can do. As mentioned a while ago, gutumin in the sense na siguro, kunyari, wag siyang mag-snack ng mabigat muna bago kumain ng meal. Or as mentioned, yung mag-exercise siya para magutom. Pero yung, Active dapat. Yes, hindi natin dapat gawin na less than three meals a day yung bata. Kasi, of course, they're growing children. And mahirap din kasi there are picky eaters na kahit gutom, hindi niya kakainin yung certain food items. So still, yun yung kailangan pa rin na tuloy-tuloy introduce. Just introduce ng introduce yung pagkain na yun. So mag-miss out siya sa nutrients if mag-skip siya ng one meal or two meals, di ba? Yes, kailangan tuloy-tuloy pa rin. Don't do that, parents. <laughs> Watching. Okay, Doc uh, Myrtle. Siguro, um, tama naman yung good. Meron talagang cycle yung gutom or hunger. Uh, we always have that hunger pang um, mga two to three hours after a meal. No? So um, we just have to take advantage of that hunger pang. So you just have to be, um, uh, siguro may schedule lang siya. So no snacking in between two to three hours before feeding. Kasi meron talaga siyang, ano, di ba? kung may schedule yung battle, for example, um, 7.30 may breakfast siya, tapos 10.30 yung AM snack, and then 12 yung ano. Um, in between those times, paglaruin mo lang siya. So magugutom mm-hmm. siya. So ganun. And then, come snack time, meron, meron kang opportunity to introduce a food na hindi niya matatanggihan because of the physiologic need. Um, and um, it's an opportune time for you to maybe introduce one. As I said, you have to um, always give choice to the child that are both healthy so that it's a win-win situation. He wins, you win too. So, if I'm gonna... Oo nga. Gusto ko yan, yung may dalawang choice. Pero yung dalawang choice na yun, they're actually both your choice. Both, both yeah. healthy. That's yeah. a good tip. Okay. So, we have one more um, from Nolor de los Santos. Ang tips for moms who have, uh, what is this? Good, good? G6PD children. What what does that mean? Ah, uh, okay. Is that a um, Okay po. Um, yung mga may G6PD po, yun yung parang okay, okay. Uh, at birth, meron silang deficiency sa isang hormone na importante sa um, pag, um, pag, pag digest ng certain food, no? Um, for the moms, Siguro you have to just watch out for yung mga common. Um, y- y- kung mer- kung kung G6PD mom ka, meron ka dapat listahan, pero don't get overwhelmed with that listahan. Um, you just make sure that when you get your child checked up, alam ng pediatrician or doctor na G6PD siya kasi meron lang mga certain, very limited lang naman yung antibiotics and mga supplements na hindi niya ka- pwedeng itik. Siguro for that yung mga vitamin C na mega doses. Pero yung um Normal dose ng vitamin C is also actually good. You don't have to be scared also of giving fruits and vegetables to your, um, if you're a parent of a G6PD uh, child. Because, ano, um, nasa, kung, kung nasa, ano siya, um, requirement, um, hindi po siya mag-react or mag anemia It's more of parang, uh, more of yung, yung mismong infection talaga yung, kalaban ng G6PD, eh. not really the nutrition part. So don't be scared to offer yung mga food na um, for some for some reason. You should ask your pediatrician about it, kung ano yung mga hindi pwede. Pero there, hindi naman ibig sabihin na totally hindi mo siya pwedeng kainin. Pero ano lang, meron lang mga group like yung mga beets or yung antibiotics like uh, kotrimoxasul, ganun. Pero um, she can live normally. So hindi niyo po siya, um, hindi niyo po siya kinakailangan i-limit sa ano po. Huwag ko kayong mag, ma, ma, matakot na magbigay ng mga healthy food choices. 
Mm. So ano yun, Doc? Hindi niya ma-process yung certain ingredients or certain foods, no? Uh, deficient lang siya. Meron siya, pero not as much as the normal one. So pagka meron siya, for example, intake of antibiotics or for example, may um, may infection siya, mas mabili. Ang, mm. ang reaction niya kasi would be yung mag-aanime siya mas mabilis compared dun sa ano. So, but um it's a common ano condition um that's why we screen early para mm-hmm. ma, ma ano siya um, maagapan at malaman din ng mother kung paano yung mga tamang uh, nutrition and everything okay. but it Carmel, that, he can live a good life he can he can, he can mm-hmm. live like he can eat good okay lang walang good nutritious food oo yeah. yes yes Carmel, do you have anything to add Yeah, gusto ko lang i-emphasize sinabi ni Doc na it's a pretty common condition we see here in the Philippines. Pero hindi dahil common siya, ibig sabihin parang malilimit na yung lifestyle ng bata. Kasi nga, um, dahil deficient lang siya, I, I know of people na sinabing bawal kainin to, pero sila natotolerate naman nila. So it's just best na you always talk to your pediatrician kasi ano naman yan, um, parang they could always they know what's best for you regarding your condition. Okay, that's good to know. Okay, so we have a video question from Mommy Janelle. Let's watch this. Hi, everyone! I'm Mommy Janelle, and these are my twins, Faith and Hope. And these two are ultimate foodies. So every time I go to the grocery, binibili ko talaga yung mga food na gusto nila para naman hindi nasasaya. But my question is, nutrition facts on food that I bought from the grocery. What should I watch out for? Thank you! Grabe, sobrang cute ng mga twins! Thank you for that question, Mommy Janelle. Okay, uh, who will want to um, ta- uh, answer this first? Carmel. Yeah, sure. Yung nutrition facts, it's actually very useful, especially now na marami tayong packaged na food items. Yung at least alam na natin somehow yung content. So madalas tinitignan natin kasi dun sa label, it would be the calories first, and then yung servings. So just make sure kung ilan yung servings, yun yung sinusunod natin. But also, since bata, yung pinag-uusapan natin, medyo bas- mas konti pa rin dun sa serving recommended. Kasi yung bits of nutrition label na yun, it's for a 19-year-old with a 2,000-calorie diet. Ah. Yun yung standard. Eh. It's for a 19-year-old male na 2,000. So syempre for kids, dapat Um, i-adjust mo nun. Kung 10-year-old yan, okay, dapat mas konti somehow. Mm-hmm. And then, aside from okay, calories, mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. yun yung, ano, um, important to remember, yung uh, calories, and of course, for kids, yung sugar content, um, yun, lalo na yung mga matataas. Of course, medyo ano na, magiging technical if you say how much exactly. Mm-hmm. Pero yun, titignan mo lang yung um, the sugar content, the calories, and also yung vitamins and minerals. Usually, in percent naman nilang ilalagay yan sa food label. O oh, like, mm-hmm. this contains 5% iron. Yan. So, at least alam mo na, okay, fortified with iron to, then alam mo may makukuwang mineral yung kid. Pero mas okay pa rin yung mga whole foods, no? Carmen? Yes, yung definitely. Yung yeah. fruits. Yung nakikita mo na, alam mo, okay, this is this is an apple. This is uh, a papaya. As opposed to yung mga processed, of course, which we can yeah. eat Once in a while. Yes. Dapat okay. whole foods pa rin talaga. Mm-hmm. Doc Myrtle? Yeah, um, I agree. So, dapat uh, as much as possible uh, for mga kids, um, hindi mo na yung mga process to. Or maybe, mm-hmm. siguro, like, biscuits is okay. Pero yung mga chichiria, di ba? Um, I think you have to be aware of um, yung salt and yung salt, sugar, and caffeine so, sa mga mm-hmm. drinks. Oh, so yun lang siguro for for children uh, zero dapat yung uh, sugar and caffeine. Okay, so take note parents, uh, we really have to watch out what we feed our kids. Always read the label and uh, watch out for sugar, caffeine and salt. So, syempre, whole foods pa rin tayo. And what an insightful discussion this has been. I've learned so much from our esteemed guest speakers in just one hour. Actually, overtime na tayo. One hour and uh, 20 minutes na. 
and so many tips and tricks that I can apply to my little one thanks to this live stream. To all our viewers, I hope you learn from this too so you can so your kids can benefit from eating healthy and nutritious food. And of course, thank you to Carmel and Doc Myrtle for joining us today and helping us parents with our kids' nutrition. And of course, thank you to Barrio Fiesta for bringing us together for this wonderful event. Before we go, Carmel and Doc Myrtle, do you have any words that you'd like to share with us? I'm sure our parents are intently listening. So, uh, Doc Myrtle first. Um, I'd like to thank Barrio Fiesta for this opportunity lang. And then, um, just remember to be patient with your child. It will take as long as it takes for the healthy habit to set in, but you should start with, of course, yourself. You can't give what you don't have. And for our mm -hmm. service lang, I'd like to um, just um, encourage you to just um, go to a professional healthcare practitioner or any doctor if you have any medical concern. So we have the Consulta MD um, service. This is a 24-7 unlimited service with the licensed doctors. Um, no need for appointments, but if you do need um, specialists, we also have it. So um, you just download the app uh, at iOS and um, uh, Play Store and um, just um, get access with the service of our um, dedicated doctors there. So um, we hope your kids would be healthy and um, this pandemic just stay strong. Yes. Thank you for that, Dr. Myrtle. Uh, Carmel? Well, I'd like to thank Kelly, Doc Myrtle, and of course, Maria Fiesta for bringing us all together to discuss such an interesting topic because it's very common, this problem, this concern, sa Filipino, sa mommy, sa daddies. And um, yun, as Doc mentioned, just, just be patient and um, feed them ev everything that you can feed them. Just make the, their tastes, ad parang bring them to an adventure whenever they're eating. Yun. And then if you have any questions, nutrition questions, and as mentioned ka kanina, yung meal planning, if you need meal plans, if you have any nutrition questions, just feel free to message us at Facebook Nourish Philippines or at Instagram, at Nourish Philippines. Yun lang naman. And thank you again very much. And I wish yung mga viewers natin ngayon, they learned a few things from us that they can apply to their children. And we wish good luck na, ano, you, you really get to succeed feeding your kids as much food as, um, and healthy then. Thank you so much, Carmel. And Doc Myrtle, thank you, thank you for all your insights. Grabe, napaka-invaluable talaga. Ang dami ko natutunan today. And as promised, here are the winners of the Healthy Kitty Plate Photo Contest. And for the five most engaging viewers of today, uh, we are announcing the winners in the comment section and the Barrio Fiesta team will reach out to you on how you will claim your prize. Again, thank you for all. Thank you to everyone for watching, and we wish all the moms and dads the best with your picky kitty to healthy kitty journey. Happy Nutrition Month, everyone! This has been your host, Kelly Misa Fernandez. Thank you so much, and goodbye.